websites. Even if you're just wanting to learn how to create an application for the iPhone, it's still good knowledge to learn how to create a website itself as I'm learning in my own personal project. So bring in Hacksaw Academy. With 11 projects to choose from and 20 hours of content and more content being added monthly using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's a great place to start learning how to create your own websites. Projects such as the Responsive Design Project as well as the Pretty Forms Project. I follow those projects and they're great. And the best part is you don't need extra software, everything is done right inside of the website itself. So if you want to join Hacksaw Academy with over 5,000 other students, at $25 a month you can go ahead and give Hacksaw Academy a try but if you want to give it a try, there is a 14-day free trial in the description down below, which you can go ahead and test it out yourself. Anyway, big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. On to the tutorial. Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be working on how to use SD Web Image inside of your project. So if you have no clue what SD Web Image is, you're really missing out. It's a framework that's used by Facebook, Netflix, and a bunch of other companies, which makes loading images from the internet really simple and easy. So just to give you a quick rundown of what this is, it's a way to asynchronously load and cache images that are from the web inside of your project or inside of your app. Now, normally this would take a lot of time to do, but with SD Web Image, it makes it super simple. I mean, it's one line of code, really. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be going over today. Again, a very useful framework, and I'm actually using it in my own project, and it's really making things easy. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so first off, to get started, we're just gonna go ahead, open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project. This is going to be a single view application. Go ahead, click next, and our product name, you can go ahead and call this whatever you want. I shall call this my image test, whatever. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and say our language will be Swift, device is universal. Go ahead, click next, and create. And now that we have this created, we're gonna go ahead and put in our SD web image. So the way we do this is I'm gonna open up Safari. I'm just gonna search up SD web image and that will be my GitHub page right here. So this is going to be SD web image GitHub page. And if you wanna read into it, you can go ahead and say how to use and just all this stuff. You can learn everything about it. We're gonna be going over pretty much the basics today, but you can read more into it and exactly what you can do with it because there's, it's pretty extensive on what you can do with it. But let's go ahead and learn how to import this inside of our project. Now I'm going to be using installation with CocoaPods, so we're gonna be using that, but you can install it via Carthage as well. So let's go ahead and import this via CocoaPods and if you have no idea what Co but CocoaPods is, I mentioned it a few times in my video. But either way, just go over here to CocoaPods.org and learn everything about it and import it inside of your projects like so, following these directions. But either Way, I'm not going to go over how to install CocoaPods. Let's go ahead and install our SD web image into our project. So I'm going to go over here to my terminal. I'm going to say ls and then cd desktop ls to see where I am. cd, uh, this is going to be going to my image test. That's what I called this folder right over here. I'm just trying to access that folder. And then ls and then as soon as you're in the folder place that has .xcode project, you just say pod in it and it's going to install a pod file into your image test folder right here. So you can go ahead and take that pod file and we're gonna go ahead and add the SD web image pod into there. So as you can see right here, it says a comment pods for image test. You can go ahead and delete that and we're gonna go ahead and put in our pod for SD web image. So this is actually just going to be this right here. So pod SD web image and if you want to grab the version you can but I don't think it matters in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and take that, paste that in there. And now let's go ahead and install this pod. So I'm first off going to save this by hitting command S. Head over here back over to my terminal and I'm going to say pod install. And now it's going to install SD web image into my Xcode project. And as you can see, this Xcode project actually doesn't work anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. And now from now on, because of pod files, we need to work inside of our image test.xc workspace. And yeah, the Xcode workspace is now what you're gonna be using from now on. So just keep that in mind. If you open up the other project, you're just gonna get a bunch of errors. Now, as you can see inside of your pods right here, you have pods, SD web image, and this is what we're gonna be accessing and there's lots of support files and stuff that you can look into. Now if you actually look into SD web image it's actually done in objective C code so there's not much to worry about pertaining to like when Swift 4 comes around or if you're just using Swift 2 everything should be pretty similar just using SD web image there's just gonna be a different kind of look to calling the functions but overall it's gonna be the same. So now we can go ahead go over here to our main.storyboard 
and let's go ahead and set up our view controller. So what we're gonna do is delete that view controller that's in the scene right there, and we're gonna put in a table view controller inside of that project. And what we're gonna do is inside of this table view controller, we're gonna go ahead and load up an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in an image view right into that project as well. Then I'm gonna take this image view and set it up to my content view. So I'm gonna say equal width, equal height, center vertically, and center horizontally. That way the image view fits perfectly inside of the cell. Now also with our table view here, we want to make sure this is the initial view. So go over here to your attributes inspector and say is initial view and you're good to go. Now with this cell right here, another thing we want to do is give this a reuse identifier so that we can access it later. So I'm going to go ahead and put this as my cell. You can call that whatever you want. Then with our image view right here, another thing I want to do to access this later is give it a tag of one. And again, that just allows me to access things later. And yeah, there we have it. Now we have all of this set up. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just head over here to our viewcontroller.swift and let's set it up so it affects a table view controller with the super class of a UI table view controller. So now if we head over here to our main.storyboard again, we can click on that view controller, head over here to the identity inspector, go to the class, and we should be able to set that equal to our table view controller. So now everything inside of our view controller.swift should affect that view controller in our main.storyboard. So we're good to go. Now the next thing I want to do with this is we're going to go ahead and make an array of URLs or essentially an array of places where our images are held and what we're going to be loading into our project. So I'm going to go ahead and say var my image URLs will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and this is going to be an array of strings, like so. And then now instead of my view did load, I'm gonna go ahead and say my image URL will be equal to and open bracket, close bracket, and then we're just gonna add in a few URLs for our images. So first off, let's go ahead and grab some images. So what I'm gonna do is just go over here to ifixit.com. I've got this image of an iPhone. I'm gonna right click on it, say open image in new tab, and this is where you're gonna be grabbing the image from. You don't just grab it from any website. You're gonna be grabbing it from exactly where that image is stored. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go over here to my image URLs and paste that in there. So now this is one image. And then another thing I wanna do with this image. Now, another thing I wanna do, you can just grab images willy-nilly off the internet, but if you wanna host your own image, you can actually go over here to firebase.google.com, go to the console, and then we're just gonna go ahead and go into one of our random projects here, uh, go into our storage, and inside of here, you can go ahead and upload your own images and it actually hosts those images at a certain URL that you can grab. So we can go ahead, upload a file, and just grab an image off your desktop. So I just grabbed this random image off my desktop, and this is what I'm gonna be loading in. And then what you're gonna do with this image here, you're gonna go here to your file location, and say download URL, you can just go ahead and copy that to your clipboard simply by clicking. Then head over here and just paste that right in there, and we're gonna be loading those images up. Now, uh, let, yeah, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and just load those two images onto our project. Now, if you have tons and tons of images coming in, this is where this SD web image thing really comes in handy. But I just wanna show you how it would work with just two images right now. But again, it's really useful in situations where you're trying to cache a lot of images inside of your project, say if you're creating a social media site or whatnot. Now down here, let's go ahead and load up these images that we grabbed inside of our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and say table view, uh, this will be my cell for row at index path. And then I'm also gonna say table view number of rows in section. So for the number of rows in section right here, we're gonna go ahead and return the value of our image URLs dot count. And then with this one up here, we're gonna go ahead and create a cell. So I'm gonna say let my cell equal our table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier like so, and our reuse identifier, if you remember from earlier, is capital C-E-L-L. -L. Uh, this is exactly what I'm grabbing from right over here. If we click on our table view, go to our cell. As you can see inside of the attributes inspector, we set the identifier to cell. That's where I set that earlier. Now let's head back over and continue on. So I have this cell will be equal to our table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier. And then we can just go ahead and say return my cell, like so. And then right after the cell right here, you just want to add an exclamation point because it is an optional value, but you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and access the image view that's inside of our cell. So we have the image view tag from earlier set to one. So what we're going to do is just say, let my image view equal my cell dot view with tag 
and we're going to set that equal to 1. So now we have our image view, and then it doesn't realize that this view that it's grabbing is an image view, so we just need to go ahead and say as a UI image uh, view, like so. Now finally with this image view, we want to go ahead and use SD web image to load it onto that image view. And it's actually going to cache these and also load it in asynchronously. So that's why SD web image is so great. You don't really need anything else other than this one function. You don't need to worry about dispatches or queues or anything like that. You just use this once and you're done. But before we're actually able to use this, we're going to go up here, we're going to say file new and then this we're going to be file and we're going to go ahead and create an objective C file. So now we're going to take that uh, call the file whatever you want. It's going to be deleted in just a minute. Click next create and then what this is going to ask you is if you want to create a bridging header file. So just go ahead and create that as well and then with our .m file that you just created go ahead and delete that move that to the trash. We don't care about that thing. What we really care about is this image test bridging header dot h and inside of here we're just going to go ahead and say hashtag import and then inside of here you're just going to import our sd web image and right now if you were to just leave it this way we'd actually get this error sd web image file not found what you're trying to access in the core right here is a dot h file that you can import so if you're trying to use gifs or gifs or whatever you call them or if you're trying to use the uh, ui image plus multi format or web cache what we're going to be worrying about today is our ui image plus our web cache dot h that's the one that we're worrying about. So the way we import that directly into our project, we say SD web image slash, and then we're just gonna go ahead and put in our UI image view plus our web cache dot H. And that is what we're loading up inside of our project. And now if we were to actually build and run this, let's just make sure that it's importing that properly. It's not giving us any errors. And then now that we have no errors going inside of our bridging header file, we can actually go up here to our viewcontroller.swift. And now there's an extension added inside of our image views and our images. So we can say image view dot SD and it's going to bring up all your options. That's how you know that this is working with SD web image. You just type in SD and it's going to give you all these options. So you can cancel animations, images loading, uh, set image with a placeholder image. Uh, you can set an image with our URL. What we're going to be doing is actually setting the image with the URL and then we're going to be looking into the other options in just a minute. But we say SD image, set image with URL. Then we're going to go ahead and say URL open parentheses and then we want this one that says just the string right here. So the string that we're loading up is our image URLs, image URLs, and then we're going to be grabbing a specific string for the index path dot row. So you say open bracket, close bracket, and just put in your index path dot row. So we're loading up the images for each of the various cells. And now let's go ahead, build and run this, and let's see what's happening. So we just built and ran this, and as you can see, the images load up, and they're asynchronous, you can't really tell that, but they're loaded up asynchronously inside of our project, which means that we're able to actually keep scrolling inside of this project uh, even if the images aren't loading. It's caching those images and if you were to have tons and tons of images which I'm just gonna go ahead and cheat a little by saying a comma at the end of that we're gonna go ahead and copy that and let's make it have just tons of images loading up inside of our project because with tons of images this is where it really shows up because it makes uh, scrolling inside of a table view a lot smoother a lot faster and as you can see boom it's all just loading up easily with that one simple out of cone SD set image. Boom, you're done. Now one thing I want to talk about that I didn't really get into is with the images that are loading up, really I only have two images but I'm loading them over and over again inside of the array. So with SD web image, again, it caches those images. So really you're just loading those two images and then you're, it's recognizing the rest of the images are already inside of the data, so it's just using them over and over again. That is the beauty of caching images inside of your project, and that's another thing that I wanted to point out about SD web image, just to make that clear. So it's not loading eight photos from the web, it's actually just loading two images from the web, and the rest are the same as those other two photos, and it's just using, reusing them over and over again. Either way, just wanted to point that out. Back to the video. So again, there's lots of power behind this SD set image. Another thing we're going to look into right now is you can add a placeholder image if you want. So you can say .sd set image with a URL with a placeholder. Uh, you can have a completion block if you want. That is actually very helpful later on if you're trying to run a function as the images are being loaded inside of your project. You can also do this one that says SD set image with URL placeholder and options. Now we're going to look into the options real quick because 
the options are pretty cool once you get into them. So we're gonna go ahead and say with the URL, again, this is going to be our image URLs. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in our index path dot row. And then our placeholder image, uh, we need to go ahead and put an image inside of our assets.xe assets in order for this to work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a random image from over on my desktop, place that right in there. And now we're gonna load that as our placeholder image as the images are loading in. Uh, some of this stuff, because the images aren't that big, but if you have really big images, it's really helpful to have a placeholder image. So that's what we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in an image literal, grab that image, and voila. Now with the options here, this is where things get pretty interesting. So I'm gonna say open bracket, close bracket, and then you can say dot, and then it's gonna give you some options. So what you can do here is avoid auto set image. Uh, you can read about all of these options that they have, but the one that I'm interested in is you can continue it in the background. And then also I'm gonna say dot, and then this one is going to be a progressive download. So what this is going to do is actually load in your image progressively. It's not just gonna pop into the scene. It's gonna be kind of loading bit by bit onto the project, which I think just looks cool. So I'm gonna be doing it inside of this project. And one thing I noticed right now is I have this error. Again, I forgot to put URL open bracket, and then this is going to be a string colon. And then we have our image URLs for the index path.row. So just go ahead and put that in there and you should be all good to go with our SD set image. And voila, as we're scrolling through, you have a placeholder image. Uh, so the progressive download wasn't that noticeable because we don't have that large of images, but you'll just notice that it's all loading in bit by bit and stuff like that. Again, it's smooth scrolling. It's adding smooth scrolling into our table view. Again, there's lots of things that you could learn about SD web image, but honestly, you just really need this SD set image with our URL and you are good to go. You could really just do that and you are caching images. You're loading them asynchronously inside of your project. And you want to, if you want to add placeholder images, you can do that as well. Using SD web image inside of your project just makes your project a whole lot smoother to use. If you have a project that's loading in a ton of images, really look into this framework. All right, there you guys have it. Again, SD web image is very useful. I highly recommend using it inside of your project. If you don't use CocoaPods, there's other things to use such as Carthage and a bunch of other things to put it inside of your project. But either way, use it because it makes life a whole lot easier and it makes your app a lot better. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed exploring this framework with me. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. It does help my, my channel a ton. And also if you have any awesome frameworks that you'd like to recommend to me, be sure to leave it down in the comment section down below. I'm always looking out for the best frameworks out there that I can import into my project to make it just that much better. Either way, have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.